In this video, we'll discover how we can write code that allows elements on our page to be interactive before these elements are created. So I'm going to show you a finished file for this exercise where we click this button and we create a div tag. That might not be terribly exciting because we've dynamically created HTML with jQuery before. But the div tag that we've created that's holding my name has additional code in it so that when we click on that div, we get this response. Here again, this might not seem too exciting, but the whole notion that we can write code that predicts what will happen in the future regarding the DOM and then respond to it accordingly is really powerful, and I'm certain you'll use this fairly often. Let's take a look at how we do this. You'll need to open exercise underscore 4.html, which is located inside the Chapter 7 directory. If you look at the top of the document, you'll see a script block where we have a document ready function, and you can see where we dynamically create the div. We've done this before. We're using a jQuery method that takes the button whose ID is make div. It's the button you see here with the input tag whose type is equal to button. And we respond to the click of that button by executing the function that we write here. And that function consists of a single statement on line 11 that dynamically creates a div tag whose ID is equal to new div. And then places a P or paragraph tag inside that div with my first name. And then we have our closing tags. So this creates the DOM element in memory, but what we really need to do is push it out to the web page so that we can see the element. And we use the append to method to append the div tag created here to the body of our web page. So now we want to add additional functionality to this newly created div with our name in it. We want to make it so that the user can click the new div and the alert box will pop up. So let's get back into our script box. And this should be somewhat familiar to you at this point using the jQuery function to access the new div. The new div has been given the uh, ID on line 11 of new div, so we'll just reference it that way. So there's the new div acquired by our jQuery function. Next, we'll add the click event and respond to the click by writing a function. And that function will just pop up an alert box that says you've clicked the new div. So at this point, we're not doing anything too new. We've accessed DOM elements before and written these functions to respond uh, to any activity with, with the acquired DOM element. So let's save this file and we'll test it in the browser. Let's click the button that makes the new div. We want to be able to click the new div now with our name in it and see the alert box. So we can see the new div, but there's no pop-up when we click the new div. So let's go back to our code and see why this is happening. Everything seems appropriate according to what we've learned about jQuery so far. We've used the jQuery method to acquire a DOM element and respond to the click, and then we wrote a function. However, we're going to need a bit more jQuery here, because remember, when this file is loaded into the browser, the document ready event fires when the entire DOM has been loaded into the browser. And at that point, this div is non-existent. So the div we're referring to here called new div simply does not exist in the document object model when the page is loaded. It doesn't exist until the user clicks this button and the div is dynamically created. So with that in mind, it makes sense that we couldn't write code to something that doesn't exist yet. Or could we? That's where jQuery will come into play to give us a hand. So we're going to modify this code a bit to get this to work. So let's begin by selecting the code that we've just written so that we can comment it out. So we'll use standard comment code to comment this section, slash asterisk, and end the comment with asterisk slash. Next, we'll rewrite the code properly. So we're going to start with the same basic code. The difference will be in the jQuery method that we now call. So we're still going to acquire the element with a jQuery selector by ID new div. The method that we'll invoke, however, is different. It's called the live method. And inside this method, we pass what we're trying to respond to, which is a click event followed by a function, and we can pass the event object here in case we need it, and a set of curly braces 
holding our function code, which will simply be an alert statement indicating that they've clicked the new div. followed by our closing braces. So the key to getting this to work is invoking the live method. So let's save our code and we'll test it in the browser. Again, I'll click the button that makes the new div. And then I'll click the div and you can see the alert box. In this video, you learned how to get elements that do not exist at startup to respond to user interactivity after those objects are created.